What's going on everybody? Thanks again for tuning in. Well, as you can see, I'm out on the river about to do some fall steelhead float fishing. So, um, looking forward to today. Just got out here. It's the middle of the day. I just have this afternoon to fish. So hopefully we can hit a couple spots and uh, show you guys some bobber downs and hopefully some awesome fish fights. Um, I'm going to be going over at the end how to tie a soft bead rig. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned till the end. And for all those that have stuck with it, I appreciate you. Um, thanks again for sticking with it. And for all the new subscribers, I appreciate you as well. If you are new and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Drop me a like. Send me a comment. So I'm going to be float fishing today with a center pin rod. It's a Rapala R-type. Um, I actually really like this reel. It's got a back 5 bearings. It's pretty smooth. It's got an extremely light, um, unique setup. The cork is removed and you just have the uh, graphite. So uh, it's 13 foot and I'm using 15 pound Hitna Chromium and I'm using uh, STS Seaguar 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. I'm using some peach colored soft beads and uh, three out and size seven split shot. And I'm also using a blood run eight gram float. So. Um, nothing too complicated today as far as setup. I'm only fishing soft beads. I'm not fishing spawn. I'm not fishing any hardware or flies. It's just going to be a soft bead. These fish should be on an egg bite right now. So most of the fish, at least a lot of the fish that I catch early fall are going to be on eggs because they chased in for the salmon. So, um, stay tuned. Like I said, we're going to head to the spot and, uh, hopefully we get into some fish. So we're at the spot and... The sun's starting to go down. It's kind of the, the time. So um, we're at a nice little, almost like a little bit of a tail out here. And I'm seeing some coho jumping up river. So this would be a perfect place for rainbows and steelhead to hang out. So again, we're just using a bobber and a soft bead. So we're gonna see if we can get into a couple fish here before dark. Again, this is a little baby rainbow I've caught.
Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. Holy cow. Nice. Oh, that's a nice brown. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, sweet. Oh, look at that. Right in the top of the lip. That's a nice. That is a pretty, pretty brown. Oh, he's out of here. Shit. Go chase my bead. Hey, that's crazy, dude. That is crazy. I don't want to break my rod. Wow. That is cool. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, 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 no, 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 bro. Oh, wow. Uh -uh. Oh, uh. There's the hook. Inside out, baby. Dang it. That is awesome. That is so cool, you guys. Not targeting these fish. My bead was in the hole and this guy just came out and literally hit it and almost like scared me. Pulled the rod almost out of my hand. So we're gonna get him back. But what an awesome catch. Looking for fall steelhead in this little creek and came across a male coho. It's not even really that bad looking. Its tail's kind of beat cool. up, but look at that fish, so pretty.
Thank you, doll. All right, so I thought I'd show everybody how I rig up my soft bead. Beads. I like these because the fish seem to hold on to them a little bit longer, um, giving me a little bit more of a chance to set the hook. And then I think there's something to be said for the scent too. Obviously these plastic beads, um, a lot of them come scented and if they don't come scented, you can add scent. So you got um, Atlas Mike's, you got anise oil or you got um, salmon egg oil. So these both have worked for me in the past when I've soaked the soft eggs in this. So something to think about and get eggs that are already scented. Um, I use a couple different kinds of soft eggs. These are probably one of my favorites. Um, this color in particular, it's like a peach color, a little more like a, like a dead egg, salmon egg, um, one that's been in the water for a little bit and start starting to essentially turn white. <clears throat> so this is one I like. So I'm going to do this demonstration using one of these beads. And I'm just going to take a bead out here. So there's an egg there. <clears throat> All right, now a couple things you're going to need. So obviously, you're going to have some leader line. Um, these are the kinds of line I like to use. I haven't found too often that the fish are line shy from 10 pound tests. So usually the least um, or the lowest pound test I will go is going to be 10 pound. Um, and then if the water's a little bit dirty, especially in the fall, I use 12 because you got a lot of big fish. Um, they're fresh, they're very feisty, and they're wanting to fight. So this 12 pound hold up, holds up a little bit better, especially in rivers when you really need to put the wood to the fish and keep them from going into snags. So again, either one of these will do, but again, I like, um, you know, to kind of use a little bit of both and then I will, you know, rig them up kind of like this. Um, pre-packaged so I can fish them and then I'll label them which ones are 12 pound test and then I know which ones to use um, if I'm fishing in a little more uh, of a high speed of a current or like I said if the water's a little bit dirty so these are the kind I like I like this STS trout and steelhead uh, seaguar fluorocarbon for my leader so I'm gonna take the 10 pound okay and I'm gonna pull off a few feet and that just kind of gives me some flexibility to work with um, down the road when I'm actually rigging it. So I'm going to take the line. Now this is a really simple, simple snell knot. I like to use um, blood run tail out hooks. And this is a size eight. I'll use size eight for the 10 millimeter beads. I'll use a size 10 or a 12 for eight millimeter size beads. And if I did go down to a six, which I haven't in quite some time, then I would use a 12 or a 14. So I try to match the size of the hook with the bead. So you can see that looks, it doesn't look like the egg doesn't look proportionally big or disproportionately big to the hook and the hook doesn't look disproportionately big to the egg, at least in my opinion. So tie this knot I'm going to go in through the front hopefully you guys can see this I'm not using colored lines so I'm going to go through and leave myself a decent tag end I'm going to loop it back towards the eye and I'm going to keep a little loop here right at the bend of the hook now I'm going to pinch this and I'm just going to wrap forward usually eight or nine times. Now, as you can see, I'm holding it down here to keep it tight. So the wraps don't unravel and I'm also wrapping next to the previous wrap. I'm not overlapping any of my wraps. Like I said, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'm going to hold it. Now I'm going to pinch the top and leave the loop I made in the beginning exposed. I'm going to go through it. Okay, and I'm going to pull it so it's like this. Now I'm going to switch. I'm going to pinch the back. 
I'm gonna pinch into my wraps a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna slowly pull this forward. You're gonna feel the loop start to slip through your fingers. You wanna just let it come through kind of slow. You don't want it to come through too fast. Okay, now, once you see all the wraps kind of bunch together, you're gonna grab the tag end. Usually, my hands are kind of slippery right now, so I'm gonna use my teeth. I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull both sides and then I'm gonna tighten everything up. So again, I chomped on this side and I pulled this that way and I pulled this that way. So. It's really easy. You can do it on the river. Like I said, I like to um, do these rigs up ahead of time just to make it a little bit easier. Now I'm gonna cut the tag end you can typically leave a little bit of a tag end. We're good there. Okay, the next step is I'm gonna take a bobber stop. Now, there's two kinds of bobber stops you can use. Um, These I'd actually gotten on, got on Amazon. These are almost like a translucent. They're a little cloudy, but they're essentially clear. They're supposed to be clear, and I actually really like these. Um, they're a little tighter on the line. So I'm gonna use this one for this demonstration. Okay, now you're gonna put it on just like a bobber stop and then you're gonna slide it down to about a three finger width between that and your hook. Let me pull it down a little bit more there. About three fingers. Now I should have, or sorry, you should have something like this. Okay, nice big gap. Now I'm gonna go back. Oh, just real quick to another uh, bobber stop you can use are these speed bumps. I honestly really, 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 really like these. Um, but it seems like the newer ones that I've been getting, um, I don't know if they're just, you know, made a little more cheaply than they were before, but they just don't seem to hold onto the line as well. They slide down really easy. A lot of times, just a gentle hook set on my rod um, when I have one of these beads and my bead will end up at my hook. So, um, you know, again, sometimes you get a good batch that's a little more of a durable, a little tighter rubber, it holds onto the line a little bit more. Sometimes you get them where they almost seem loose. Um, I got the small size. So technically these should be pretty tight on 10, 12 pound test line. So anyway, um, but you have those two options. Those are the two that I found that I like. Next, we're gonna take Just a regular sewing needle. Now I'm not sure what size this is, but you want one with where the eye is, you know, big enough to easily put 12 pound test through. Okay, so your line fits, you can just kind of look at it, but and either way, you're gonna go to the, the egg, soft egg imitation, and you're gonna look for where it was connected. Okay, as soon as you find where it's connected, you're gonna poke it right through the middle. Just like that. Now, I like to minimize the amount of touching I do with this egg, so I'm just gonna kinda of push it against this paper plate so that the needle can come through. And once I get it to about here, I'm gonna flip it around so that the eye of the needle is up now I'm gonna slide my line through, just like that. And pull it down a little bit, and then pop the bead off onto the line. Now the bead's on the line. Now I'm just gonna take the base of my finger, slide it down real quick to the stopper. And there you have it. Now you've got a rigged bead on about a two and a half, three foot leader, and then I'm gonna just I'm actually gonna tie this one on now because this is gonna be the first one I'm gonna use tomorrow, but um, there's a soft bead. So again, this is a way that I found to make a soft bead rig and um, they hold up pretty well. You can fish these all day. 
Um, and again, like I said, I'll make a handful of different colors. Um, you know, some more opaque, some translucent, and I'll just kind of go through my lineup throughout the day and see which one the fish like. Well, that does it for that video, everybody. Again, hope you enjoyed it. And if nothing else, it was informative. Um, hopefully going to be getting into some more steelhead fishing. It's going to be more winter steelhead fishing, but we'll get into more of that and ice fishing as we go into the winter. Um, if you guys haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, drop me a like, send me a comment, and we'll hope to see you next time. Take care.